luar biasa extraordinary i repeat again for the last time sampai hati awak so sehat sakit jangan bazi ai get yours now china mirrors learn malay ebooks master malay language in just a week Ghosts are beliefs about subtle beings that exist in other realms that are found in all cultures in this world. In the Malay community, the term ghost, spirit, goblin or guardian has been around since the days of animism. At that time, all large objects such as large stone or trees were considered inhabited by guards who needed to be well taken care of so that the guards did not rage and endanger the surrounding residents. A lot of people still believe it now. Even food or random meals are prepared by an experienced person known as a shaman to ensure that the guardian help the residents from the onslaught of disease outbreaks and crop enemies. This practice still remains among some people in the community. In the Islamic point of view, it is totally forbidden. Anyway, let's get to know the common ghosts in Malay community. The first one is Pontiana or Kuntilana. Kuntilana, but normally people say Pontiana. Kuntiana or Kuntilana is the ghost of a woman dressed all in white and wants revenge. In her lifetime, this woman died in childbirth. There is also a theory that says this woman died during pregnancy. Pontianak, disguised as an exquisite girl, walking alone on a quiet road and goes around murdering gullible men to suck their blood, harming pregnant women and consuming babies. However, they can be controlled by plunging a nail into a hole within the back of their neck. This action will turn them into human form. If it's removed, they will change back to their original state. Some pregnant mothers always carry a sharp object with them. This includes scissors, knives, nails, and needles. The same goes for the mother with a newborn baby. If seen, it is difficult to distinguish between Pontianak and Langsu because they both have long hair, ugly faces, fangs, white dress, long claws and have loud voice when laughing. They can also transform into beautiful women. However, the motive of Pontianak is to get revenge, because usually they were killed, or raped, and then committed suicide. The presence of Pontianak, are often associated with, the sound of babies crying. Therefore, Pontianak are often found near residential areas. In contrast to Langsu, Langsu prefers to eat, the still bleeding fish gills, that can be found from human set traps. Therefore, it prefers to inhabit islands, forests, or derelict houses, near rivers and disturb humans there. Langsur's voice is so melodious, to mesmerize men and to possess them, then the same motive as Pontianak, which is to suck blood. If a Pontianak needs to be nailed, at the back of the neck, to change into a beautiful woman, while the Langsur needs to be nailed in the, frontal area of her head, and she will remain beautiful, as long as the nail is embedded in her head. Next one, Toyol. The body is green, bald-headed, sharp-toothed, hairless, in the shape of a naked small child, with round and bright red eyes. That's how Toyol looks like. Toyol is kept by his master 
to steal money, or jewelry, as well as other small-sized valuables. This activity takes place at night. Due to its small physique, it is not easy to get caught. However, the victim claimed to have seen small footprints and fingerprints at the scene of the theft. Sometimes, these footprints bring traces to the house of the Toyol's master. Toyol's master obtains it, either by buying from the shaman, or asking the shaman with a certain amount of fee to bring it to life. With the recitation of a mantra by a shaman, an evil spirit is blown into the corpse of a fetus, either died of miscarriage or being aborted. There is also a theory saying, graves were dug, to get the bodies of babies, who had just died. Keeping a Toyol, is entering into a contract, with the devil. The Toyol's master, had to give him blood, by wiping the blood, from his fingers, onto the Toyol. Otherwise, the Toyol will suck blood, from his master's big toe. If the master does not meet this condition, the Toyol will suck the blood of his family members. Some of Toyol's masters died of too much blood loss. Toyol also can be passed down from generation to generation without consent. The treatment given to Toyol is like the treatment for the children. Toyol was given milk, sweets, toys, and even biscuits. Typically, toys and green beans are placed close to the money and valuables to be well kept. This is because the Toyol will be drawn to play and will forget its duty, which is to steal, and when the sun rises, it will has to return to its master. Sometimes, the needle is placed under the banknotes because the Toyol is very afraid of sharp objects. Mirrors are also often placed in such places. A house with a lot of mirrors will not be entered by Toyol because Toyol is afraid to see its own reflection. If the Toyol's master wanted to break the contract, he has to call a shaman to bury the Toyol back in the cemetery or put it in a bottle and throw it into the ocean. Therefore, never open a bottle found in the area. Toyol is basically not as dangerous as the other ghosts because it will not hurt its victim. If there is no master, the Toyol will only observe the crowd from afar and will roam the forest area. Next one, Pulisit, Pulisit. Belisit is a type of devil or genie that is kept by women for the purpose of beauty and love by many. Belisit will make its master look beautiful and attractive in public. Belisit is also used by its master for the purpose of black magic. Sometimes, the Pelisit will attack the person who hurts its master without her knowing and instructing that action. Belisit can bring money to its master by possessing people. Then, when the master pretends to heal the victim, the Pelisit will come out from the body and the victim will pay a sum of money to the Pelisit's master as a token of gratitude for curing them. Belisit will disguise as an apple green colored grasshopper, and it looks different from most grasshoppers. Sometimes, it disguises itself as flies, rats, and insects to easily enter the house without any suspicion from the victim. Women who keep Belisit are women who have lack of self-confidence. She wants herself to be accepted by men and feels afraid of being left by them. Sometimes, the trauma comes from seeing her mother become a single mother because of an irresponsible father, or sometimes, this trauma is due to constantly being brainwashed by the society that women's self-worth depends on men's acceptance. The master of the Pelisit keeps it in a bottle or container and gives it blood from its master's finger as food for the Pelisit. Pelisit can be inherited to be constantly fed. The Pelisit without master will harass anyone it likes by possessing them. Physically, the victim will experience numb and tingling feet. There are bruises on the body with three dots in them. Hair fall or dandruff. Short-sightedness. Swollen gums and decayed teeth.
despite maintaining good oral hygiene. The face looks dull, becomes lethargic, forgetfulness, and often lose things. In addition, the victims will experience a situation constantly under scrutiny. The victims also have the feeling of hearing as if everyone was cursing or denigrating them. The victims feel that whatever the actions and words of others are intended to hurt them. Feelings like this cause the victims to isolate themselves. Victims are in a furious state. The victims will have the feeling of immense hatred for their husbands or wives. According to the view of traditional healer, the pelvis it looks like a very ugly old woman with long white hair. The way to recognize the grasshopper of a pelvis it is by looking at the red mark on its head. When its head is pulled out, we will see a fine strand of hair. Extraordinary. I repeat again for the last time. Sampai hati awak. So, sehat, sakit. Jangan bazi air. Get yours now. China Amir's Learn Malay eBooks. Master Malay language in just a week.